Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NewCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we are going to be working with forms with functional components using the useState hook. All right, so to get started, let's go ahead and create two states. So the first state I'm going to create is the username. And we'll pass it an initial value of an empty string. Let's go ahead and make a copy of this. And the second state we'll call the password. Okay, so now from here, let's go down to our form. And what I wanna do is just display the state. So we'll just come down here and say username is, and we'll go ahead and display that. Make a copy of that, remove that, add the password. And we'll say password is. All right, so now from here, let's go ahead and actually create our input field. And we're gonna give a type of text, so that is fine. We're gonna pass down another prop called value. And within this value prop, we are gonna pass down a state. So the first one is gonna be username. So essentially when we have a value prop and we pass down a state like this, we are telling React that we want a controlled component. So now this input field is basically bounded to whatever value is within this username state. So we initialized it to an empty string. So it's just an empty string right now. Now the second thing we need in order for it to be a controlled component is a prop called on change, and this is to update the state. Now this on change prop is gonna take in a function. We're gonna get the event object back. And what we can do is call our set username. So this is gonna update the state, it's a function. And what we're gonna do is pass in whatever the user typed in. So that's just gonna be e.target.value. All right, so now let us make a copy of this. So this is for our username. And we are just gonna do some changing. So our value that we're gonna pass in, it's gonna be the password. And instead of calling the set username here, we'll call set password. Now, if you don't want the type to be text for password, you could just say password as an input type. So if I go ahead and save this, take a look at it in the browser. You see that we have our H1 tags rendering and that our initial state is an empty string. So that's why you don't see anything. So now if I begin to type in here, you see that our username state is being updated. And if I type here, you'll see that our password state is being updated. All right. so let us give more examples of different types of things you might run into. So let's say that you don't want to create a state separately. You don't want a username and password like this. Well, let us go ahead and comment this out and we'll create a state with an object. So we'll say cons, we'll set this to user. And this time we'll say use state and we'll pass in a username. We'll initialize that to an empty string. And we'll say password. Okay, so this time we're working with an object. So now what I can do is let's go ahead and change this. So we're just gonna say user.username just so we could display this. And we'll say user.password. Same thing within our value prop. We got to change it to user.username and we'll change this to password. All right, so this isn't going to work as we have it right now. We do need to change the on change handler that we're being passed in right now. So what we can do is we could pass one more prop and we'll see why we'll need this in a second called a name prop. And this name prop should match the property that you have within this object. So we have username, password. So our username input should match username. We should pass that in here. And our password 
should I get a name prop of password. Next, what we can do is instead of creating two different functions here is we could come above the return statement and we'll just create a function called onChange user. And we'll get back the event object. And within here, we could call our set user function and we'll pass in this object. So this object is gonna replace the current state. So the first thing we need to do is copy over the old property values. And to do that, we can use the spread operator. So on the current state, which is user. So this is gonna copy all the property values within this new object that we're passing in. And next, we need to use computed property names. So we use the square brackets, say e.target.name. That's why we pass the name prop to these inputs. So when I type within the username, it knows that I wanna update the username. And if I type within the password, it knows that I wanna update the password. And what we wanna do is set this to e.target.value. So whatever the user is typing. Next, let us go ahead and use this function we just created and pass this here. And we'll do the same down here. Now let us go ahead and save this. Take a look at the browser. You see it's asking me to save a password. No, thank you, Google. But you see that we initialize our username state to empty string, password to empty string. If I start typing, our username gets updated. If I start typing here, our password gets updated. Very last thing that I want to cover within this tutorial is let us talk about our on submit. So right now we don't have any on submit functionality, but we could come down here within our form and pass a prop called on submit. And we'll just pass in a function called on submit. Okay. So now we have to go ahead and create this function. And likewise, we will get back the event object. And the first thing we want to do is prevent the default from occurring. So this prevents the default submission. And all we're going to do is print out the state. So we'll pass in the user. Next, we need a way to actually submit this form. So let's come down here. Let's create a nice button. We'll give it a type of submit and I'll go ahead and say submit. So afterwards, let's go ahead and save this, take a look at the web page, and we have a nice little submit button. So let's go ahead and hit F12 to bring up the console. I type, everything's good to go, hit submit, and our on submit button works. So we get our user outputted here. All right, so that is pretty much all I wanted to cover within this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next one.